Hi, in this video I'll take you through the Fresnel biprism. This is part 2 of my video. So we will uh, take a biprism and fire some beams of light from a source to be put on the left hand side. On the right hand side we'll put a screen and take some measurements. There are some markings on the screen A, B, C and D. Let's look at an animation. So here we are firing beams of monochromatic light. Let's take red wavelength as an example. The central beam passes through the rectangular area which is the joining portion of the upper and lower half prisms. The upper two beams hit the inclined face of that upper half prism and bends and finally refracts downwards. The lower beams hit the inclined face of the lower half prism, they bend and refract upwards. And you can see that on the screen dark and bright bands have been captured. So these bands are not occupying the entire height of that screen. They are only in the center and that's very important. So the interference apparently is taking place only in that central area between B and C where these beams are having a phase difference. Let's look at another side view to understand what's happening. So here's a gun which is leveled up with the joining plane of those two half prisms. So the central beam passes through that joining plane obviously it will not refract it goes right across and hits the screen the upper two beams hit the inclined phase they undergo refraction and they bend downwards the lower two beams hit the inclined phase again they undergo refraction and they bend upwards now on the right hand side on the screen you can see a zone where the lower and upper beams are intersecting the light waves have traveled different distances to reach the screen and therefore i've highlighted that central intersection zone with a kind of a pink color and here there will be a lot of phase difference and therefore you get these dark and bright bands. A 3D view is uh, making things more clear. So I have fired a beam of light. So after refraction they will form a kind of trapezoid so to speak. The lower two beams also will refract and form a kind of trapezoid after coming out of that biprism. So these two trapezoids are of slightly different color and you can see the intersection zone and what's notable here is that it's very easy to understand that only in the intersection zone you get these bright and dark fringes between points B and C and that's once again because the light waves are traveling different distances to reach that screen and different distances means a phase difference and a phase difference means that the peaks and troughs will have there are plus and minuses and together you either get constructive interference causing a bright band or destructive interference causing a dark band. Let's take a absolute side view of the whole thing and this makes it even more clear. Now what's new here is that the rays of light which refracted and hit the screen can be projected backwards and uh, they will intersect at a point marked in a pink dot. The same is true of the upper two beams of light. So you have one intersection on the top, that pink dot, and one intersection on the bottom. These two intersections are actually dotted line projections of the rays of light which hit the screen. So they are virtual images. And these two virtual images are behaving like two virtual sources of monochromatic light. In other words, we started with the real source of monochromatic light, which is the gun on the left, and we landed up with two virtual sources of light, S1 and S2, which are at a distance small d. So, these are behaving like Young's double slits in the famous Young's experiment. Now, we can look at the textbook representation, since our concepts are clear, and this shows the same thing and we can see the points A, B, C, D on the screen and we can see the fringes being formed between B and C. So we have the small d, the distance between the two virtual sources, S1 and S2. We have the capital D between the line connecting the sources and the screen itself and we have the fringe width W. We have to relate all these three with the wavelength of light that we fired. Incidentally, we fired the red wavelength. So we started with the real source of light and landed with two virtual sources. And the fringe width is defined as equal to capital D into the wavelength of light divided by the small d. 
So that's all there is to the Fresnel's biprism, and uh, we landed up with the Young's double slits. Thanks a lot. Uh, have a great day.